Um, Darius, if you... <laughs> Hi. We made it. Yes, it was, it was funny because you were live on that, on your page, and I was live here. So you were inviting me, and I was inviting you, so that was a little... <laughs> All right, let's see. Okay, this is great. Yeah. Sorry for the delay. No, that's fine. That's fine. It happens all the time. So if I put this up like this, how's that's that? Good. That's that, that, good? that works. Maybe that's um maybe that's the best way. Yes, yes. So let me turn off the comments if uh, everybody uh, hi Mary. So hi everyone. Hi Mary. I think Alex I think my friend Alex Conroy's on now. Did you jump over here, Alex? I think you're there. Let me turn on the comments if somebody wants to say hi. And um, yeah, we have time. Lots of lots of things to discuss. And uh, okay. I'm excited. Okay, so how was your day today? So. It's been good. It's been good. Lots of um, you know. So I'm here at Christie's, and we are engaged primarily in working with objects from the history of photography. And um, we have our big May season coming up the May sales and so I have every I have a board here that shows all of the things I'm working on little little cutouts of like the picture so I've got an amazing Man Ray from 1930 I've got a William Eggleston tricycle from 1976 I've got Peter Beard I've got Maplethorpe but I wish all of the come and see the, the uh, shows that up uh, is, is in Christie's you can so. come to Christie's yeah. and see these things on the walls starting April 29th. But what I want to what I want to dig into is this um, this question around the fact that each of these photographers really developed a style and a visual language using the tools available to them at the time. Interesting topic. And right, right. So using the tools at the time. And at different points in this, uh, in this history of photography, you know, photography really is so, has, has been such a radical tool for humanity. It's a new, we, we didn't know what the surface of the moon looked like until we had a telescope. And then we couldn't, we couldn't share that until we knew how to print it on a page and send it, right? So it's taught us about long distance things it's taught us about we, we we can see inside of our bodies all of these things we can share this information and machines have helped us to do that tools and machines early machines were things like just lenses and a telescope or a camera obscura a box that we called a camera and then they got more and more complicated to the fact that now, you know, then there were 35 millimeter cameras and handheld and motor drives and long lenses large and formats, fil formats. filters and large format. And then we had digital and, you know, now it's just light heat hitting a, a light sensor and recording all of this information. And now for some reason, there's been a new tool developed and everybody on the planet is losing their minds <laughs> as though, as though photography hasn't been the radical tool of transformation for already 180 years. That's Ali, what do you think about that? I don't know. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's an exciting topic. So uh, the question comes from the idea that some, some people are very uh, biased. They, their thoughts are so biased about photography. Right. So there's two things. One is AI. The other one is AI in photography. So right. there are two different types, I think, because the capabilities of AI is different. And then we can use that technology in photography. It's a different matter. So my question is that um, because we talked about it before, yes. somehow we know how what we think about. So I got so many. Questions. I received so many questions that I'm going to share. Oh, good. Some, yes, some people are so concerned. Uh, some some people are freaked out because they think they're going to. Um, lose their jobs. Right. Um, John Paul Caponigro is here. I just want to say hi. Thank you, John, for joining us. And uh, what what do you think? So, uh, is AI photography photography? So, I mean, do you, do you consider it as a photography, or you consider this as an image making tool? So, how do you uh, 
make a line if you want to make a line because I think the line is blurred now. That's that's my idea. Uh, the line is blurred. So, but there's a all the definition of photography that light should hit a surface then we can see the image and that's the definition of uh, um, photography so some people that this is not a photography this is just the uh, image making tool but uh, what, what do you think about that let, let me turn off comments uh, so and uh, let me turn off commenting and i'm gonna uh, give time to people to ask the questions at the end of a discussion, I think we can talk for an hour if you have time. Yeah, sure. Yeah, let's, yeah. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, let's go like more like maybe 50 minutes. Yeah, 50. I think that's so, so I'm going to moderate the time to <clears throat> like we can talk like 30, 45, 40 minutes and then people can ask the questions. So this old definition that is producing images by the action of, of light or radiant energy and especially light on a sensitive surface that people called photography. And they say, uh, no, this is not a photography. So what do you think about that? So let's, let's start from, from this. Well, okay, so there's multiple, there's multiple things. There's multiple questions in here. And the question of whether, I think I'm least interested in the question of whether it's considered photography in the sense of some kind of scientific definition. I mean, what we, as, as a, like to say, is a is a cyanotype silhouette of a leaf on a piece of paper is that photography is that any different than like a daguerreotype which has to be made with a lens is that any different than a 35 millimeter gelatin silver you know image and i mean it's all it's all using light sensitive chemicals so in that sense no scientifically it's not photography it's a computer making composite images so that's it's not photography in that kind of light sensitive sense um but the question about is is i think it i think what people are really asking also is should we consider things produced by a computer art right is that is that does that feel like a better definition it, it, it feels like a better definition but but if we separate photography in two forms I don't want to do it, but anyway, we have to make some borders and lines to understand. So, some see photography as a service. So, if you are a wedding photographer or a pro, uh, commercial photographer, sure. and then you can use the medium, uh, we can use the camera or the photography in a world of art. So, I think we can make a line to understand how it works because uh, it, I just saw that an AI modeling agency just established in LA. So models are concerned now, uh, and the Levi company, I assume, yeah, because they're thinking that they're losing the jobs. So in terms of, uh, so if if you do, if you go and take some family shoots and weddings, which I still think that taking pictures of people are a safe place now, because yeah. you have the, the real person you need to take photos right. of. Right. So right. And, uh, yeah, it, it, when, in ter when it comes to the, doing a service, so maybe people say no it's not photography but in the world of art which i have so many other questions we can discuss in the art world yeah, yeah. let's do it well so let's say so let's say the way you're talking about photography is a, a, is kind of linked to this idea of it as a service so let's say i'm getting married and i i love star wars and I say to you, or I say to Mariam, the photographer, the photographer <laughs> and right. I say, look, I want you to take portraits of my, my wife, my fiance and me, but then use AI and make us look like Jedis and like we're standing on the planet Tatooine. She's going to say, okay, I can do that. I'm going to take portraits of you and then feed that into the AI. And then the AI is going to add the whole background and all of that in a way that you're just using it as a tool to create a fantasy world. That's no different than if I, if I asked a painter to paint me standing on, on the planet Tatooine in his version, right? It's just a tool to make a fantastical image. So great, that's fine. There's nothing, it, it, it's useful, it's a useful tool. 
if I mean, so that's one way to think. Again, I, I keep thinking about anything related to AI is really it's just a very powerful tool. And um, I have no problems with that as a tool. The industries in which it's very nonspecific. So if I'm an advertiser and I say, I need a picture of a model, you know, of a woman who's sitting in the front seat of a car, the general public doesn't know if that's a real model or not. And it doesn't matter because that it, for me as the advertiser, I don't really need a real model or not. It's sort of, so it's sort of like, it depends on where and how it's being used, I guess, um, as to whether it's important. So that's it. That's a good point because when we were talking about this, so you mentioned the painters. Yeah. So it seems that these type of concerns are amongst the photographers more than painters. You, uh, as but, but remember, so, you know, a hundred years ago, if you go back and look at advertising a hundred years ago, photography was already invented. And if you look in like printed advertisements or mail order catalogs of that time period or magazines, they were still using painters to paint pretty pictures for the cover of the magazine. They weren't yet using photographers. Now, when's the last time you saw a painting as the cover of Vogue? Like it's been a hundred years since you saw that. So photography replaced painters. So, so I mean, studio photography where you've got a model in the room and blah, blah, blah. What's to say that a computer is now gonna replace photographers. It's just part of technological process, progress. I don't see any problem with that. So yes, some people may lose their job, just like the painters a hundred years ago lost their job for making magazine illustrations. Like nobody, you don't hire magazine, you don't hire painters to do magazine illustrations anymore. You do hire illustrators who use computers for magazine illustrations. Sometimes there's photography involved, sometimes not. So it's kind of a non-argument. It's just people not realizing where they land in history. That's all it is. Like, learn your history. If you're, if you're an advertising photographer, learn your history. Look at magazines 100 years ago to see what you were competing with, and then 50 years ago, and think about where you fall. You may, you may be doing something that's gonna change, and so change your skills, or, you know what I mean? It's like, it's just part of history. So um, very wise. So I'm just saying it as a <laughs> yeah, because you and I are on the same uh, path, at least in this yeah. matter. So yes. it's image making tool. Know what you want to do, but uh, you know there's uh, lots of discussion out there, yeah. especially that I want to come up with come uh, come up with this idea that about the competitions. Yeah. So two major competitions. One of them is one of the big ones, the Sony. Yeah. So the photographer put one of his AI, I sent you the link, I'm not sure if you Boris L. Yeah. Dagsen. It's a German photographer. Yeah. So um, what do you think about that? So is it, so, how do you So he submitted and did he, do you think he was trolling them? Like he submitted an AI generated? <laughs> that was a good question. So I, I'm not sure what was his, what he was thinking. So, but if I, if I was the photographer, who submitted my AI images. So I would accept my prize and then come out and then started to interview that, listen, um, this, this a, a, a image was created by the AI machine and uh, I just uh, participated in your competition and you didn't understand it and you didn't, or maybe they, they, they found out, I'm not sure because there are lots of uh, gray areas in there. But if he was concerned that this is not a photography and I want to troll you. Yeah. So this, this is not the part that I'm in. So, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, so I've got the image. So this, so this is a fine art competition. So you put a, put an image that you made it. You are the story, a storyteller. So it's, I, I, I'm, I'm sure that we have lots of uh, audience yeah. in audience that are maybe mad or crazy about this. But this is your story. And um, although the AI is not powerful yet, so we, we cannot control all the aspects that we have or we want to make, 
um, as an artwork. Yeah. So that, that's what I'm saying. Because you write a prompt and there's something in your mind, but you cannot change anything. So you just see the result and then you have to go with another prompt. Or at least um, you can give the AI, this, this, this image making tool, a reference. Right. Uh, right. Maybe, maybe your photographs or the others. Right. Right. So then it gives you something close that you have in your mind. Uh, especially with the new feature called describe so you put an image on the uh, imagine mid journey one of the uh, apps that you can use so and it described the image for you which is a very interesting uh, feature that i found out so yes in terms of because the guy the german photographer said i wanted to enlighten the the uh, sony or the judges that so they should make a line i think that was his intention i know it's so interesting so he submitted it in a cre in a creative open category. That's 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 the so category. I have no problem. It's a creative category. Right. So he wasn't presenting the image as some kind of documentary no. photo journal piece. No, I don't think. So. And so, so the picture, as we've all seen, is there's two women. One is kind of behind the other. Yeah. The one in the. The one in the front is looking up into sort of a way in the camera and it has kind of this it looks like it's from the 1930s or something yes yes okay so let's pick this apart a little bit okay. so so if first of all like when we all have these filters on our cameras now or in photoshop where you're like you know, you push a button and you want like sepia toning. Well, sepia toning as a filter, most people probably don't realize that sepia toning is actually a chemical bath that you would, yeah. that you would, you would take your gelatin silver print and you had to mix up two separate chemical baths and you would dip in your photograph into the first bath, part A, and then pull it out. It was a little bit of bleaching and then you put it into part B, and that's what would then turn it uh, turn it brownish. But now people just push a button on Photoshop. That's right. So they don't actually, I mean, I, I guarantee you of the 80 people watching this right now, not a single one of them has ever mixed up water and maybe chemical. Maybe one of them. Maybe, maybe one, one of them. Maybe one, one of them. Because I, I, I know one or two okay. of them. Okay, great. So maybe one or two of them know what that filter on the computer refers to. It refers to an actual physical process. Now, it's not important that you know that, but it's useful to know that when you're choosing this filter on your camera and you think you're being creative, you're actually just trying to mimic something that you, you had to do in real life. And that's fine. We accept that. Nick Brandt's photographs are sepia-toned, for yeah. instance, but they're not sepia-toned. They're actually toned in the computer to make it look like a chemical process that used to happen in the old days so that you then imagine you're looking at something older. So now you're starting to play a psychological trick. You're trying to make me think, so this guy, Bern, Bernagsen, that his name? Yeah, Eldogsen, Boris Eldogsen, he's trying to play a trick in the sense that he wants me to think, oh, this photograph looks like it's from the 30s or 1940s when it's not. Now, why does he want, why does he want to make it look like it's from the 1940s? Because it triggers a kind of nostalgia. And this is where you get into this idea of the way images look are coded to, to reference different things that then make us feel different things. So something from the 1940s might make us feel a different way than if it looked like maybe Daido Moriyama's photographs from the 1970s. That then says something different. But it doesn't really. They're just, it's just colors on a photograph. It's just a toning. It's just a digital effect. So the fact that now instead of actually pointing the camera and taking a picture and then pushing a button that says, make it look like it's sepia toned. Now you just tell the computer to do the yeah. whole thing. Yeah, it's not right. so different. It's still a human 
that's saying do these things. Right. Right. So, I, so it's it feels like a huge leap, and it's like, oh my god, now the computers are making images, and it's like it's not really a huge so, leap. So you can all do, do do all of this stuff in Photoshop, so it's not that yeah. easy. Yeah. So you've been anyway. doing it already for twenty years in Photoshop. Yes. That, so so I'm now, sorry. now it just happens faster. Okay. So, so if so if I want to make a conclusion, so. So you're seeing AI as an image making tool. So it's not a photography by all definitions, right? It's just a tool it, that a human. Just a, so we are on the same path together. So, so if someone says it's not photography, you will agree with that. Well, or, or let me, let me, let me rephrase my question because uh, I think uh, some, some of our, um, so I think definitions must evolve as we do. Yeah. Can we, can we, so is it possible? So maybe we can change the definitions. I'm not sure because uh, for me, the line is blurred. So I don't think that, so I see it as an image making tool. And it doesn't matter which I make it, made it by my camera, which is here right now. Right. Or by an AI program. Right. So, and I think that, that definitions of photography must evolve. Maybe so many peoples are not with well, me or yeah. against. Well, so the, the definition around oh. photography, yeah, the definition already changed when we had to deal with digital. digital. So okay. before it, you, we used to say, you know, it was, it was chemist, it was light sensitive chemistry. That's that right. Made things a photograph. Well, digital, there's no light sensitive chemistry. It's a sensor that, yes. that you know, takes a reading. So then we started saying things like, well, there's lens based images versus, you know, camera less images. Yeah. So, so, so in ter terms of like how you make an, a photographic image, you know, it, it, there's, there's more and more sort of nuance and teasing that out. But again, I, AI, AI photography doesn't make any sense to me. Okay. It would be like saying, well, there's, computer photography it's like well well what isn't that di like that's digital but it's still a tool so it's like ai is just a tool okay so here i have to manage the time so that's why I'm no no i know i know okay so here's something for me to th for everybody to think about you can type into the ai you can type in and say something like like this guy with his picture here up uh, here and i'm going to show everybody the picture sure. to see if this is this is it. Yes. Okay. So you can type in and say like, um, you know, make Show it female of, yeah, you can, you can write. Yeah, 19, make, make it from the 1930s yeah. and it's on a glass plate negative, That's you know, give, you know, and they're like her, you know, their hair doesn't look really real. The fingers the don't look real. Oh, yeah. I think you know, it was for, for the, the version five. I'm not sure. Yes. Yeah. So it's kind of nostalgic looking, but it's like, it's not a, it's not a great photograph. Um, but if I were to say, um, the, the thing that here's, here's what I think about computers. They can only reference what already exists. So let's say if I type into mid journey and I say, make a photograph of a car, an abandoned car on a street at night that looks like Todd Heido's photographs. Well, the computer knows what to do because it knows what Todd Heido has done. That's right. right. Or if I say, take a, show me a picture of a pretty woman on a white background and make it look like a Richard Avedon photograph. It's gonna know what to do because it can search the computer, can search the it's internet. The, the reference, it, the, so. There has to be a reference. But if I said, and this maybe somebody should do because it would be really interesting to see. If I said, make a picture of, take a picture of a man wearing a suit, but use, use a lighting style that no other photographer has ever used before. <laughs> okay. What would it do? Like, my point is the computer can't come up with something new. It's only doing like an amalgamation of 
reference points to the past. So the original creative person was Todd Heido or Deanne Arbus or Annie Leibovitz. They were the ones who had the original creative thought that, that did something different. And then the computer can only reference that. But I don't think, I don't know what the computer can do that's new. It's only very fast at referencing everything from the past. So uh, this is this is the time. This is the place that I think I imagine that <laughs> we had this discussion before that it's going to evolve. So I think it goes towards the consciousness. That's my assumption. I'm I'm not sure about it. So and it, now we are limited. But I think so. It it goes towards that that place that we can anything that we want. So yes, now because it gives us the options and more tools that now we can manage to make the things that we have already in our mind. So anyway, okay, so this is a very big topic. So I, 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 I don't think that we can handle it today. So maybe another session. And I, I'm telling all the people all the time that camera is another machine. Camera is another machine. It's a machine, it's, totally. It helps you to bring your imaginations to life. So the brushes for the painters. So I'm not able to get into this type of philosophical stuff, but uh, I have one very specific question yes. for you, Darius. Um, is it possible to put these AI images in the fine art world that people collect and pay money? Like imagine that, are you seeing a day as a head of international head of photographs at Christie's? that you have an auction about the AI images. Do you, do you think about that? Yes and no. <laughs> I, so yet, yeah. I mean, we sell, you know, the art world is filled with all sorts of things that seem ridiculous. And they seem ridiculous maybe when they're first made and, they, and then they gain, if they gain cultural value, meaning if the artist that makes them has, has some very has some friends that buy them and has a gallery that sells them and then gets some newspaper or magazine or online articles about it and starts to build a brand then um then those things have more value so like for instance Andy Warhol was considered a total you know initially he did not have a great following and there was not just like every artist every artist started off not having many followers and it took time for them to build their career and it doesn't matter i mean you can there are so many examples from the 20th century of work that is not necessarily technically difficult to make so you've got andy warhol you've got cy twombly you've got whatever, some of the abstract expressionists, it's like, it's just, you know, a, 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 a color field. So the technical, like, value of making the work, the technical difficulty is not what determined whether it had value in the end. It was the person and the networks that they developed and the people that they were able to influence and who responded to the work. So do I, is there going to be, I mean, we've sold Richard Prince screenshots from Instagram. That's right. Many people would argue that's not art. I don't, I'm not here to argue whether it that's, is or it is. a topic, so I, mean, I want to get into right, it. Right, but it is re relevant in the sense that if you can take a screenshot from Instagram and blow it up and frame it and sell it for $100,000, then you go, go for it. If you can do that, great. And Richard Prince can. So if Richard Prince wants to type in anything he wants into mid journey and it pops out an image and then he prints it and frames it and sells it fine. I don't care. I got it. <laughs> Okay. So right. that's a business I, side. Of... I should just say the art market doesn't care about how it was made. So yes, people will use AI and people will sell AI, but is AI going to somehow gain consciousness and start its own art career without any human behind it that's totally crazy talk that's not that's not happening okay got it so um so in, in for the competition so there's one thing that came to my mind at least for now that the these these organizations can put some 
very specific rules that maybe you can send us the raw files or show us the behind the scenes, which I think that this is going to change because even for the raw files, I think in the future, AI can give you the raw files with any, uh, right. I don't know, of the cameras that you want, for example, just give me the raw files of this image uh, with the uh, Sony cameras, this model, and uh, the, the date and the time and the exit. Right. So all the is set. So, um, and then they they say, oh, there was some behind the scenes that we make sure that you took this or you made these images by uh, 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 your cameras, or they can put a very specific category on their uh, competitions. Right. So not that I got, which I think uh, we already uh, talked about it, but it's uh, one of one of one of my followers asked me that: Can we call the AI images art? Do they deserve this right. word? It um, it's art if a human says it's art. Okay. At the moment, I mean, honestly, again, if you as an artist are and you go and you try to sell it as art and you have a gallery and you put it on the wall and you sell it as art, there's nobody to tell you it's not art. Got it. There's no art, there's no art arbitration board about what is art. I mean, we all heard the story about Art Basel Miami where an artist duct taped a banana to the wall and sold it for $150,000. So if you can yes. duct tape a banana to the wall and sell it, it's art. So if you can make an image out of AI on mid journey and sell it. This, as yeah, this is, this is the topic that people need to know that there are other things that are involved instead of the art itself. Yeah. People get hung up on like, is this, is this art? And it's like, that's not the question. It's, you know, it, it, th that's a whole deeper conversation yes, yes, of yes. what yes. constitutes art, but everything can be considered a work of art in, in the art world. So it's a, that's a harder one to okay. kind of get into this. But yeah, I would just challenge photographers to not think so black and white about their tools. Photography has been a medium that has forced everyone else to adapt. Like if you imagine, if you can imagine before the daguerreotype, there were only people who drew things by hand. That's it. There was no other way to make an image. That's a good and point. That, that's a, like, there was no other, just think about it. There was no way to make an image except to take a pen or a pencil or a piece of charcoal or a paintbrush and like draw it on a piece of paper or on a canvas. And so now all of a sudden, some guy in France named Daguerre sets up this box and it's got a lens and he pushes a button and then this image comes. Well, what the <laughs> fuck? What am I supposed to do now? I've, my whole career is drawing pictures and daguerre just with a box i know so I, I, photographers so upset about another box making images like you guys get over it you're photographers you're that's in, the thing that i'm saying to all the photographers you're like, in get over it. revolution photography is revolution that's already it's 180 years old so there's more revolution that's <laughs> not a bad that's 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 right so uh they can, yes, that's that's good to know. I want to know the comments. Do people think? <laughs> Let me get one more, and we we go to the comments. So, uh, despite the future of AI in the world of photography, uh, what do you think about the future of photography itself? It's amazing. Okay, it's amazing. The future, the future is amazing. Okay, great. Why? Is because it, is this amazing realistic or is it just the positive thoughts? It doesn't matter. It doesn't. It's matter. all because. We have, look, I mean, we can do anything. We can do anything. Humans have figured out how to do anything. We can swim to the bottom of the ocean. We can fly around the world in a plane. We can, you know, we can, we've got these tools that tell us exactly, exactly where we are on the planet. We can call, we can have a FaceTime. I don't even know where you are right now, Ali, but we're like having a, a video conversation over <laughs> over some wireless network that I don't even know how it works. So it's amazing. And the more that humans tap into their creative potential, humans are the ones that make the world amazing. That's right. If, if we choose to. And so we've got all of these tools around us to be even more amazing and to bring 
light and life and positivity and all of that together. And, sh and so the question is whether like, well, are we talking about fiction photography or nonfiction photography, right? Which in the world of photography is, you know, imaginative creative photography or journalism. And the reality is there's lots of, there's a, so many tools to do both. Yeah. Like show me, show me a fantastical, amazing creative world. That's great. Or show me the world as it exists right now using tools, but don't mix the two up. Like don't say, oh, there's a war in Sudan but then you're using AI ge generated images that are not about the war in Sudan. Like that's, that then becomes borderline lying. So what is your, so what is your, so is it your advice to photographers who are skeptical about the future of photography or uh, the Look, ones who want, they, they don't want to get over it? Anybody Maybe. that's skeptical about the future is, is holding on to the present because the, out of fear. And you have to remember, Raise your hand if you chose the year that you were born. Did you choose what year you were born? No, I didn't choose what year I was born. I could have been born in the year 1850. That's right. And then I, then I, would, I would be, oh, but what about the daguerreotype? Now there's, now there's uh, tintypes and now there's albumin prints, but I love daguerreotypes. We have to hold on to daguerreotypes. And it's like, that's the language of 1850. It makes no sense 150 years later. So don't be the person that's holding on to the present moment out of fear. Life is always going to change. Yes. You, it's arbitrary when you arrived on the planet. It's, you arrived on the planet at exactly the right moment for you. And so whatever you're attached to, let go and embrace whatever is happening around. It's like, okay, there's this powerful thing. You may be interested in it or not you may want to go back and make some daguerreotypes that's fine the knowledge is there but don't hold on to something trying to stop it from changing it's just going to change it's like saying oh but i loved being a 19 year old well yeah and of course you did and now you're 50 yeah so get, so, get over it let me go Love for, yeah some questions that people just send it here so someone says just imagine banksy does something with ai it will be considered as fine art instantly Instantly, I, I think it's not a question. Or um, if it's someone said, Banksy, it, yeah, if it's Banksy doing it, he's presenting it as art. Okay, so, so uh, if he wants it to be art, then it's art. So, and uh, Alex says that I think it's image manipulation as opposed to photographer. You when it come, I, I, I think it's in image manipulation as opposed to photography photog when it comes to AI. Sure. It's kind of like when you say, is AI photography, it's like saying, well, is Photoshop, Photoshop photography? It's like, so, well, Photoshop is just a tool to manipulate images. That's a very good point, Alex. I like uh, that. Okay. So turn on, com turn on. So the comments are on everybody. If, so we have five to 10 minutes. So if you have any questions or you want to drop something, so yeah. just let me know. Uh, I was, so there's so many discussions because someone asked about the feelings can AI evolve into the feelings that we have today as a human or as mankind? So when we discuss about it, right? So. Well, yeah, do we very think that, very yeah, emotional are, discussion. are computers going to gain consciousness and have human emotions? I think that's still the world of uh, sci-fi. <laughs> okay. That's, I, that's... I want to say hello to all of my wonderful Persian friends. Yeah. There's like so many Persian. Yeah, there's yeah, there's so many uh, Persian friends here, followers. I want to say, in in Farsi, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I hope everyone is fine. Yeah. So oh, wonderful. Uh, that's that's right. So guys, so I think we answered all the questions because no one is interested. To uh, hi, Fajun, Amit, hi. So uh, he says, how about the process that artist is going through with camera versus AI? I think well. Look, it's the it's a different process. Um, just like when you like when you used to use a Hasselblad and roll film. That's right. It's it then different when you had to switch over and use a digital camera and memory cards and all of that. So the process is different. But ultimately, you as the human are driving the creative side. Like 
what do you what are you looking for this com this tool to make for you what is the what is that image and again you you are the controlling thing if you just say if you were to type into the mid journey and say mid journey just make an image whatever image you want it's gonna, <laughs> not going to do anything no, no, there's no. no consciousness there you are the creative agent in that so it's so sometimes i feel it's about a storytelling so sometimes we see photographers around the world i mean the famous one one of the famous ones the kutson so he just yeah. writes this story and he he has this huge i mean so many people around him like the set designer totally do the casting and pr production designer and, and uh some technical people he doesn't even click on the shutter so he just go to the set i'm not saying it's easy i mean the, he, he's involved in all of this stuff he's directing and at the end of the day he's the photographer yeah so he's the photographer and um well you could but, say but so many say People are involved in on that image making. Yeah, but like today the photographer is Christian. So you know what I'm what I'm talking about. So it's like about the AI. So you write the story. You are the creative person behind the uh, all of these tools that you are, you mentioned. Totally. So somebody asked about is it is it theft like creative theft to take from all of the people? Uh, like, yeah, that's that's another question I wanted to ask. So here's the, the thing: in the art world, people are quite discerning. So if you type in and say, like I, my example before, which was to say, show me an abandoned car on a street at night and make it look like Todd Heido. Yeah. If you do that and then you show that to me, I'm going to say this looks exactly like Todd Heido. And I'm and then I'm, There's say, I'm, about not, I'm not interested in it because Todd Heido did that first and did it better. So you can or maybe do it better or maybe maybe you do it better. So it doesn't matter. But even so people will say that's not original. Like there's enough smart people that know the history of photography that'll say, you know, this is not really original. That's the key about being a great artist is you've got to be original. So the computer can generate all sorts of things, but it's, it doesn't really have deep originality, it. which it may replace a, a lot of commercial photographers that are just like, I just need to you know, bang these out and it's stuff in a studio and maybe AI will do that better. I don't know. But when it comes to like real deep originality and art, you can't, you can't fool the whole of the art world in that sense. We are, we are bombarded by the question. I know. <laughs> let me, let me read some of them uh, and let's do it as a full of points. So yeah. very, very, yeah. so one of my, uh, follow said, so do, uh, do you have any point with the changes come through photo books and AI? Because as you might know, Darius is a co-founder of Radius Books. Yeah. And that was a good question. No, I mean, AI, again, AI is just producing images, but to make a book, it takes a lot more than, I mean, it's filled with images, but you need designers and printers and all of that. So no, I don't see AI. Oh, oh. Let me say hello to Katrina Eisman. So she was one of the one of the ones that I said, so I did do CPA toning and creative people will be creative no matter the tools. Yeah. So, was the head, so he's the product manager of Adobe and uh, she was the uh, head of uh, photography department at School of Visual Arts. Wonderful. Hello, Sama. Yes. And uh, you two should have more of these conversations. <laughs> okay. I uh, was a bit of skeptical, but feeling better listening to this discussion. Intention plus Great. seven. The Darius insight was spot on. Thank you for this stunning discussion. Thank you for this conversation, Ali and Darius. Some people's reference software is AI for imagery one two. May I ask your thoughts? Is it for what? Is AI for imagery one two? Imagery one. I'm not. Yeah, it's for, I mean, it's for making images, yes. Yeah, may I ask your thoughts? Okay. So, one said AI versus real photography. So, I think we talked about yeah, this. Yeah. Um, so, and I, th Ali, I think you can save this and put it on your. Uh, of course. It, I'm going to. So, gonna... people can go back and listen to it again if they yes, want. Yes, yes. Should AI manipulate images by categorized separately with a dedicated genre and marketplace? I don't think so. Okay. That would be like, that's kind of like, it's like the old distinction. 
when people say, well, was that made with a digital camera or a film camera? And it's like, I don't, who cares? Like, you know what I mean? Like, imagine if you had a com competition where you submitted film images made with film over here and then digital over here. In the early days of digital, people tried to do that because they were like, well, this is, this is, you know, not real photography. I mean, again, the same accusation. This is not real photography. And it's That's like, right. It's just a tool. I know. Uh, so, so I'm, I'm not, I, I don't know why people are, I don't know why they're, so it's, it's a different thought. It's an open world, free world, so everybody can think what they want, so. But people, people have a hard time with change. So as you get older. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So the question is, what, how will this change and how will the change impact me, right? And that's, and there's often a lot of fear around change, but um, change is just part of the natural world and it can be exciting. So I think it's, it goes back to self-discovery. Yeah. So I need, we need to discover ourselves again and again. Totally. And, and how we can change. So uh, one question was very important and I wanted to ask, but someone asked uh, about the uh, ownership and uh it's whoever's driving the tool okay so that that was my concern because um the copyright matter so the ownership it's a it's a whole different uh discussion i think that who owns this image yeah and um i already know the answer but uh, well because, yeah, yeah. And it's it, you know the ai it doesn't look like if you type in make it look like Todd Heido's photos it won't exactly be that no because then you then it, it then that is copyright infringement if it just takes a Todd Heido photo and gives it to you but um you know but that's the you know whatever it's creating you if you just say make it look like Todd Heido's photos that's not going to be very interesting because somebody is already doing that so it's all about doing something more more interesting no. That's right. So, but I'm always telling people that we are living in a world with 8 billion people. I wrote it already on my Instagram. Yeah. And we, we fit, our brain, so we have the same material. Yeah. So we can inspire each other. We can learn from each other. Totally. So it's not copying or doing some stealing work. So you know what I mean? Totally. So go for another one and then... Add this, like in in the in the world of film and entertainment, like Hollywood studios, do you know how long we've been watching CGI? That's it's, true. it's that, it, that's the exact point. So. It's coming up on twenty years. It's like fifteen to twenty years. Maybe, so you could say those aren't those maybe. aren't real films, and it's like nobody is saying that. No, you know, that's that's it, saying all this about storytelling. So in the world of fantasy and imagination. Just use the tools available. Show me something amazing. I don't care if there's a dragon in your picture. I'm not going to say, well, that's not a real dragon. It's like, you know what I mean? It's like, I know it's a real dragon. You know, it's so like. Don't watch, don't watch Game of Thrones because it's not real. <laughs> yeah. People love it. They love the creative storytelling. And so. That's right. Game don't, of Thrones. So, so I wouldn't. Completely different from the documentary world. So yeah, totally. It's much here that we want to make our decisions based on that. Totally. Real images. So, and I want to say hi to Andrew Blunch. Yeah. So she just, this, and uh, this, let, been, this has been great. Yeah, this has been great. So we had lots of people. Maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll do a part two. For sure. Like a month or something to talk about. We can, different ideas. we can come up with different ideas and do this more often. So Sounds good. Uh, I think. I think we covered all the questions. So if someone thinks that we didn't cover, so just write it again. And so there's my friend Malik. Good to see you. Um, most, one most people cannot discern originality. So yeah, someone... Inayat Hamoun, wonderful to see you all. Thanks again yeah. for joining. Thanks Ali for having me. Okay, sure. So I think you have to go. I do. That's... I do. But wonderful to chat. All the time, all the time. So we, we will do it more. So thank you, everyone, who, are, who joined, to, joined today. And we will see you soon. Thank you, Darius. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Cool.